welcome to my YouTube channel where every episode I take a physics topic and hopefully explain it in a really simple and understandable way. Now some episodes are just going to be fun physics facts but most are going to try and tie in to the current school curriculum so when that's the case I'm going to put the key stage in the episode title. Today's episode is all about momentum. So momentum is a property of all moving things. Because of momentum, objects have a tendency to keep moving in the same direction. So objects with more momentum are harder to change direction. Hey, let's go this way instead. Hey, let's go this way instead. No, let's go this way. Let's go this way. Momentum has both a size and a direction, so it's a vector quantity. Maybe I should cover scalars and vectors in my next Key Stage 4 episode. You can calculate the momentum using the equation mass multiplied by the velocity. The unit for mass is kilograms and the unit for velocity is meters per second. So the unit for momentum is kilograms meters per second. And yes, yes. Let's get our awesome triangle technique involved, where we have momentum at the top and mass and velocity along the bottom. You may have noticed I'm using the term velocity instead of speed, and this is absolutely correct. Velocity is the speed of an object in a given direction. Speed doesn't have a direction, it's a scalar quantity, so only gives the magnitude. Whereas velocity is speed in a given direction, so it's a vector quantity. So when you specify the velocity, you have to give both the magnitude, so the speed, and the direction of travel. Right, so we have the equation momentum equals mass times the velocity. Let's think of some examples. A rugby player. So we all know that larger rugby players are better at tackling than smaller rugby players. This is all to do with momentum. Let's say a large rugby player had a mass of 110 kilograms and he could run at a speed of about 9.1 meters per second. When he's running at that speed in a straight line, this means he'll have a velocity of 9.1 meters per second in that direction. So his momentum would be 110 kilograms multiplied by 9.1 meters per second, giving a momentum of 1,001 kilograms meters per second, which is quite large and I would not want to be on the opposition there. Let's compare this to a car crash. Let's take an average sized car, which has a mass of about 1,300 kilograms and it's traveling in a straight line at 30 miles an hour. Firstly, let's convert this to meters per second because we have to use the SI units for the equation to make sense. All right, to start the conversion, let's turn miles per hour into kilometers per hour. Now there's 1.6 kilometers in a mile, so we multiply 30 miles per hour by 1.6 to give us 48 kilometers per hour. Now this is 48,000 meters per hour. So then we divide it by 60 to get meters per minute and by 60 again to get meters per second, which gives us 13.3 meters per second. And because the car is traveling in a straight line, this means it has a velocity of 13.3 meters per second. Therefore, when the car is traveling at this velocity, it will have a momentum of 1,300 kilograms multiplied by 13.3 meters per second, equaling 17,290 kilogram meters per second. Way Successful calculation! The other point to note with momentum is that it's always conserved. The conservation of momentum means that the momentum before a collision or event is equal to the momentum after the collision, as long as there are no external forces acting on the objects. Let's continue with the car example, if that car drove into another stationary car. 
The total momentum for both the cars before the collision would be 17,290 kilograms meters per second for car A and zero kilograms meters per second for car B. This is because momentum is mass times the velocity, but if car B was stationary, its velocity would be zero, therefore its momentum would be zero. So the total momentum before the collision would be car A plus car B, which would be 17,290 plus zero, which would equal 17,290 kilograms meters per second. Maths can be real easy sometimes. So now we have the total momentum for before, let's work out the velocity of the cars after the collision. If we know the mass of car B is 1,100 kilograms, then we know the total mass of car A and car B together is 2,400 kilograms. So we know the total momentum after the collision because it's the same as the momentum before, so it's 17,290 kilograms meters per second. And we have the total mass, so by rearranging the equation or using our trusty triangle, we can work out the total velocity of the two cars after the accident. We can see that velocity is momentum divided by mass, so we do 17,290 divided by 2,400, giving us 7.2 meters per second. As you can see, the crash has slowed down car A from 13.3 meters per second to 7.2 meters per second, and it's increased car B's velocity by 7.2 meters per second. There we go. Thank you so, so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did and you want to learn about other cool physics facts, then please like, subscribe, and watch all of my other videos. And if you want to learn about a specific topic, please leave a comment below and I will try to do a video for you.